I'll be explaining the stator output from a two-way ANOVA procedure. But before I do that, on the screen is a link on the tutorial I did, which I posted on my blog post regarding how you can perform the two-way ANOVA procedure. I will encourage you to read that up because it's more detailed so that you can actually follow this video. Also, before you watch this video, make sure you have watched the one I did on one-way ANOVA procedure. In that video, you will learn a lot about the basic features in your ANOVA output. So let's go ahead. In my tutorial today, my dependent variable is still a continuous variable, prices in US dollars. I have two explanatory variables. They are all categorical variables or what you can call factor variables. One of them is title states. State has two groups and the other one is chain. Chain has um, four groups. Before you go ahead with your ANOVA analysis, you might want to have a feel of how your data set looks like, how the explanatory variables are distributed across your data set. So this table you're seeing on the screen is showing um, the distribution of chain across the two states. I have four food chains here represented. BK represents uh, Burger King. KFC is Kentucky Fried Chicken, RR is Royal Rogers, while WD is Wendy's. So I have four food chains across two states, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And the figures you are seeing underneath each of these food chains represents the number of observations that you have in this data set. So in total, I have 410 data sets spread across two states. The data syntax for you to generate this table is simply tab and the two explanatory variables. Now I have my stata output from the two-way ANOVA procedure. Um, the syntax also is ANOVA, your y-dependent variable, and the two-factor variables. And in my own case, I have ANOVA, I have the dependent variable pre-fries, and I have the two-factor variable states and chain. The output I'm seeing here, I have a lot of features on it, so let me begin by explaining um, number of observations here, 393. In total, I had 410, but 17 happened not to have any values, and theta would drop any observation without any value. So after that, I have uh, 393 observations left. My R squared indicates 0.3629, meaning the variation in independent variable uh, being explained by the explanatory variable is just 36%. So 36% of variation in prices is being explained by state and chain. Source, I've already explained this in my one way and over video. Source simply indicates the source of variations. Make sure you watch that video to get deeper understanding. The degree of freedom is DF, MS mean sum of squares, F is the F statistic, and I have the prop value here. Whenever you have your uh, stata output generated for a two-way and over the best the column that uh, you are most interested in is the f uh, statistics column this is the column that uh, gives you an indication whether you are going to perform a post hoc test or not it's also the column that tells you which of your uh, indicators are significant and which are not from what we are seeing here the two explanatory variables or factor variables are very significant and it's of most interest to us because we know that we can actually perform post hoc um, analysis to let us know the paired means that are actually uh, significant in this case. So let us look at state. Remember, state has just two groups and because it has two groups, there won't be any need for us to perform any post hoc analysis because we know already that the means between these two states um, Pennsylvania and New Jersey are not the same. So two groups, there won't be need for any post hoc to be performed. But that will not be the case for chain. Remember, chain, we have four groups. So that means we need to perform a post hoc analysis to actually know which paired um, means in this uh, category of um, variable are actually uh, different from one another. And uh, when you are doing this, you can um, perform every uh, post hoc analysis you will have performed if you were performing a one uh, way ANOVA. You can apply the Bonferroni, the Scafé, or the Sidak to know which of the pair means and the level of these factor variables are actually not the same. Looking at the prop value at 0, 0.000, which uh, they are all less than the significance level of 0 0.05. So this also gives us the confidence to reject um, the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. 
Again, the link you are seeing on the screen is the full tutorial on this lecture I'm giving. Make sure you read it up. It's um, more detailed and it will give you a better understanding on how you can go ahead with a two-way ANOVA procedure. The next down table you are seeing, um, you can see that I have an interaction term here. It is still the same syntax, but just a little modification. Here now I have an over P fry state chain and an interaction term. We are much interested in the outcome of this interaction variable. So let us go to our F statistics and see what is there. Wow, it is not significant. Remember, whenever any of your indicator or variable is not significant, don't even discuss it. However important that variable is, it just simply means it's not, it's, uh, it's not uh, statistically different from zero. So don't discuss it, just move away from it, it is not relevant. So in this case, I won't be saying anything about this interaction term because it's not significant. And we can also see from this output, the two categorical variables are still significant. And like I said before, once you have a categorical variable and you only have two groups, there's no need for you to perform any post hoc analysis. But when you have more than two groups in a categorical variable, you can go ahead to perform your post hoc test. So the post hoc test will only be conducted on the chain categorical variable. So that takes me to the next page where I have my SCAFE comparison analysis. The status syntax is also one way P fries chain comma SCAFE. This will give you the status output combining the initial ANOVA output and now the comparison uh, test given by SCAFE. So let's take a look at what we have here concerning the SCAFE uh, post hoc analysis. We can see from here that indeed the mean prices from Burger King and KFC are statistically different at 1%. The same thing applies to Roy Rogers RR and BK. They are statistically different and also significant at 1%. Same applies to BK and WD, statistically different and significant at 5%. On and on and on until when we observe what we have between KFC and WD. That is the only pairwise combination in this context that is not significant. And remember, the, 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 the ratios underneath... Um, the ratios underneath the figures are the p values. So you run your post hoc test only when you have more than two groups in a categorical variable. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial by um, telling you 12 things you need to know when you want to run your two-way ANOVA. Number one, you need to inform readers about the nature of your study. You need to ensure that your dependent variable is a continuous value. The explanatory variables must be categorical in nature with at least two groups. The group members must not overlap and you must always state your null and alternative hypothesis. Make sure that you run the two-way procedure before carrying out any post hoc analysis. Otherwise, Stata will give an error message. It is important to report the F statistics, the degrees of freedom and the level of significance. Make sure you also report the p-values. You have to mention a statement on whether there's any statistically significant relationship between the groups and maybe on interaction term. If per adventure your interaction term is significant, ensure to always report that first. Post hoc is always necessary when you reject the null and when you have more than two groups in a category. If ANOVA is not significant, then there is no need for you to perform any post hoc test. Report the values or the results from the post hoc analysis and their probability values. Lastly, always remember to summarize your findings. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos from Crunch Econometrics.